Hi friends, it's Derek here, host talking with fans people, and we are uh, interested tonight, very excited to have with us, not us, Mark, who's experienced some oppression, and uh, I'd like to begin this by reading an email that his teacher sent to the class regarding his behavior, quote unquote. A number of you have expressed discomfort, fear, and unhappiness with the behaviors of your fellow students. I am taking steps to reinstate civility in our classroom. What happened Thursday 2-2 was not at all normal. In my 12 years of teaching at NAU, nothing like that has ever happened in one of my classes. I was shocked and very challenged to carry on teaching in my normal fashion. I have spent the weekend processing this with my chair, some of my colleagues, and the associate dean of students. I ask that each of you consider your own behavior and come to class prepared to make a commitment to doing your part to have a challenging but respectful discussion. I think this is an opportunity for us to learn and work through misunderstanding to rebuild the classroom community. I want this to be clear. Hate speech does not meet the definition of respectful discussion will not be tolerated. In law, hate speech is any speech, gesture, or conduct, writing, or display which is forbidden because it may incite violence or prejudicial action against or by a protected individual or group, or because it disparages or intimidates a protected individual or group. In addition, NAU policy protects our right to be a safe working and learning environment free of disruptive classroom behavior. Both are described in the back of the course syllables. Here is a, long, here is a longer description of disruptive classroom behavior. Disruptive classroom behavior involves physical actions, utterances, or other activities to distract, intimidate, or to threaten others in a manner that interferes with either the instructor's ability to conduct the class or the ability of students to profit from the instructional program. Disruptive behavior includes, but is not limited to, the following types of behavior. Persistent interruption of others, such as speaking without being recognized, interference with the normal flow of teaching and learning, the use of technology without the instructions, prior, instructor's prior permission to send text messages, disrespectful actions or speech directed towards instructors or class members, such as inflammatory comments or personal insults in oral or online discussions, physical threats, harassments, or any speech or actions that are considered threatening by instructors or students in the class or that place individuals at risk, refusal to comply with the instructor's request for appropriate behavior, violations of university, college, or department policy, or policies set forth in a clinical field placement an internship or student teaching environment, or in outside agencies working in cooperation with NAU. Um... Okay, so that's an awful lot of forbidden stuff for a classroom, uh, but... It's all really subjective, too. It's really what? Subjective. It's effective? Subjective, it's subjective. Oh, subjective, yeah. It's, uh, there's nothing concrete in it at all, right? No. So, so, Mark, can you describe the behavior which you actually engaged in the class? Yeah, you just want me to go through what I talked about earlier? Yeah. Um, so it's a U.S. history class to 1865. Um, and we were talking about humoralism, which is a, a medieval, renaissance, early modern philosophy based upon Aristotelian um, medicine, which says that if you travel to a different location in the world, that environment um, could affect your morals um, and your belief system and your skin color, etc., your temperament, um, as well as partaking in another culture's food, uh, clothing, etc. Um, <clears throat> so she was talking about that in the context of assimilation. And she told the class that we're going to bring this to the modern day and talk about presently how assimilation um, operates. And she said that historically assimilation has been a tool of oppression and uh, evil by the dominant group over the subordinate group, um, the minority group. Um, and she asked the class what they thought American identity meant. Um, and people said, American dream, speaking English, et cetera. Um, and she said, well, that's all well and good. Um, can you think of any groups in our society that we wish to assimilate because we find them um, of poor taste? She brought up uh, Muslim women and how we find that Muslim women to be oppressed because they wear traditional garb, hijabs, burqas, et cetera. Um, and that we don't agree with that, and therefore we want to assimilate them into our culture oppressively, you know, in bad faith. Um, and she asked the class 
what they thought of assimilation, and everyone agreed with her that assimilation is bad um, and evil and oppressive. Um, besides me, I said that you know there's there's two sides to this issue, both good and bad. Taken too far, it's obviously a bad thing. Um, but in order to have a country, we need to have an identity of which people assimilate into. So if, um, if American identity didn't mean anything, we wouldn't have a country. We would, like the United States would just be the name for the, the land that we stand on. Um, and therefore, I mean, every country perpetuates some sort of identity that they assimilate or people assimilate into. And I said, secondly, sometimes the cultures don't mesh well together. Uh, for example, uh, I gave an example of two Muslim men in California who said it was a religious right to rape non-Muslim women on their property uh, because you know, religious freedom in the Constitution and their interpretation of the Quran, uh, I believe it's Surah 23.6, among other places, I'm sure, um, they interpreted it as they could rape non-Muslim women. I said whether the Quran actually says that or not is not my point. I'm talking about these two Muslim men in particular, um, and I think they should either be assimilated or assimilate into the culture or leave or get kicked out. Um, and I asked prefer the professor what she thought. And she gasped. She was like, oh, and she called She said, uh, you're a racist. Um, I won't tolerate that kind of racism in my class, Mark. Um, and, you know, I, I, I said, well, that's a big claim that you're making, calling me a racist like that. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, so Islam's not a race, so obviously I can't be racist against Islam. Um, even though I was talking about these two people in, in particular, I wasn't talking about the whole group. Um, I don't believe race exists. You're more genetically related to people outside your own race than within it. Um, and at this point, people are yelling at me, telling me to shut up, other students in the classroom. Um, how long student does in the back carry, how long? How long did this exchange go on for between you, you and the professor? Um, I don't know. Maybe six minutes, five minutes. Uh, it's hard for me to recall that. I don't know. Because she asked Something, as though in the email that, that you were interrupting throughout the whole class. Although in another email, she indicates that you had your hand up too much during the class. Which is what she meant by disruption. Um Raising your hand. I don't know disruptive. how that's asking question, but what what's that, Eric? Sorry. I said raising your hand is disruptive. Right. <laughs> and um she said, you know, welcome to Trump's New America, folks, where straight white males um can say prejudicial prejudicial comments without being reprimanded for it. Um and she said, Yes, Mark, we need to have you know, respectful discussion in this classroom. Didn't say anything to the students that are yelling at me, telling me to shut up, et cetera. Um, right, she did label me and assume all those things, which is, you know. Um, and for the remainder of class, she wouldn't answer me when I raised my hand. So I, I had a question about the class material, the lecture that she was going over. Um, I raised my hand, and I'm in the front of the classroom, so it wasn't like she didn't see me or anything like that. No one else is raising their hand. She asked the class, does anyone in the class have any questions? Raising my hand. And then she said, does anyone else in the class have any questions? Um, so it just ignored me. I didn't say anything. Um, that same situation happened again. I was raising my hand. She asked the class if anyone had any questions. And then she turned to me and said, you know what, Mark, we're not going to be hearing from you anymore today. You already had your input. Um, and we would like to hear from other students in the class. And there were no other students raising their hand to ask any questions. Uh, and I said, well, excuse me, do you know how this relationship works? Um, and I pay a lot of good money to be here. And if it weren't for students, you wouldn't have a salary. So I'd appreciate it if you would answer my questions. Um, and she said, well, that's not how it works, Mark. That's not how it works at all. And I said, well, of course it is. And you're acting like a little child right now. You're acting like a little child. Um, and so after class, she came over to me and 
said that if I'm going to continue bringing up politics in class, that I should drop the class. Um, and I said, well, reciprocal burden says that if you're going to ask me to do that, I don't think you should be doing that either. You know? And she said, well, I'm the professor. I can do whatever I want. I said, well, that's not true. Reciprocal burdens. And she said something else, and I repeated myself, and I left the classroom. Um, so that was that first incident. There was another one that I didn't tell you about yet. But I don't know. Did you read the first email? You should read the first email. I have. That I sent. Okay, so we are, let's see. Because she sent that a couple days after that incident. And if I need to resend it, just let me know. I'm emailing regarding your behavior. Maybe they consider disruptive. On Thursday, two two, when I refused to attend your claim in a class discussion on food ethnicity and assimilation, the Quran advocates rape, and the two Muslim men posted a sign on their lawn claiming they had the right to rape women. I didn't say anything about a sign, by the way. Nothing at all. But anyway, keep going. You continued to interrupt me as I moved forward with calling on other participants in discussion. You made a scene, refusing to back down and respect my authority. Oh my God. To move discussion elsewhere until a student in the back row yelled for you to stop interrupting class. Then you raised your hand for most of the rest of the class. When I acknowledged that I saw your hand, but stated we would be hearing from your classmates instead as you had already had your input, you said in a loud voice, you work for me, I pay your salary. As you can see in the excerpt below, just find I disrupt your classroom behavior. Then she quotes from that policy underlining certain parts including disruptive classroom behavior involved physical action. It's the same thing that I've read before. Persistent interruption of others, such as speaking without being recognized or having your hand raised, apparently. Interference with the normal flow of teaching and learning. Disrespectful actions to speak directed towards instructor or class members, such as inflammatory comments or personal insults and or online discussions. Didn't she personally insult you when she called you racist? Right, and I brought that up in the conversation I had with the dean later. That's exactly what she did. Physical threats, harassment, or any speech or actions that are considered threatening or by instructors or students in the class or the place individuals at risk. Refusal to comply with the instructor's request for appropriate behavior, violations of university college or department policy or policy set forth in clinical field placement. Uh, but she has a, that again. I'm writing to give you a chance to change your behavior or withdraw from the class. If you continue in the course, you'll need to conform to the norms of college classroom conduct. For the remainder of the class, I will ask you to move to one of the desks <laughs> along the wall by the door the roll sheet will be passed to you we'll make sure that students who come in late sign in what <laughs> I'm she's doing a power play it's a total power play she's saying you gotta sit in the corner and you gotta do roll call for me what I also require that you respect me and the other students in the class by acting in a civil manner if you're unable to do so I will take further disciplinary action I will ask you to leave the room and I will call campus police if you do not comply I do not want to get to this point, but I have the authority to take these actions in order to protect the rights of the rest of the class to a safe working and learning environment. <coughs> I hope you will decide on how best to care for your educational interests. Well, woman, you fucked up. You fucked up. I think she knows she fucked up. She threatened the class. Like Does well, she know that, that she overstepped? It sounds like she knows she overstepped. I'm well, having a hard time hearing you. She kind of doubled down. It sounds there. like it sounds like she knows that she overstepped, and so she's pushing it harder to try to push over it instead of back off. Right. Well, yeah, I mean that could that could have been the case. I don't know. Um, well, let's. So uh, in that discussion, I mean, this isn't over yet. I still have a whole other incident to talk about. I mean, for it just keeps going at the moment. We are not saying what this person's name is because um, Mark requested we don't. And so I won't. But 
<laughs> Let the shaming begin. Let the the me mega shaming begin. Taylor, do you want to chime in anymore on this right now? Or I know you're off camera at the moment, but yeah, I'm going upstairs where you can hear me better. Okay. Because because fuck this bitch. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Fucking fascist. Unbelievable. She's going down. I've been looking at their school's policies for employees, and uh, they're pretty fluffy. <laughs> oh, There's not like, a lot going on there. Are they a lot different than the ones that uh, apply to the students? I haven't looked at the student policies. What I'm trying to find is... <laughs> I'm trying to find... Taylor, you just muted yourself. Wow. What? I have I have not looked at the student policies. I've looked at, I'm looking at the faculty policies because I want to see what standard they're held to. Or if there's a mission statement or some overall purpose of the school. And there doesn't seem to be. Well, I mean, that's just proof of the double standard. If the student policies are so incredibly restricted and the staff policies are so loose and fluffy. I mean, they're going to have to defend. Right. Um, so anyway, in that email, she said that she talked to the chair of the history department. Um, Dr. Well. I won't use the same either. But um, so I, I set up a meeting with the chair of the history department. Is that myself. you, Mark, who's making that noise or someone else? I don't think that was me. Who's making all the noise? Oh, my bad. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so set up a meeting with him. Um, you know, basically in that meeting, he said that she couldn't make me sit in the corner of the room and take roll call. Um, she couldn't even make me do assignments if I didn't want to, because I'm an adult and I'm paying for the class, and she can't force me to do those things. Um, so I thought it was pretty successful at the point, pretty successful meeting. Um, so the next time I went to class, um, I got there 15 minutes early, um, and I was reading my Bible in the front of the class, in the normal seat that I sit in. <clears throat> and is that something that you do, or is that was that an aggressive Bible reading, just out of curiosity? Oh, I do it every day. So I mean, it's just something I normally do. She she talked to me about it earlier, um, you know, before before the last incident that I was talking to you about. She came over to me and said, "You know what, Mark? You, you know you can't bring that up in class, um, because you know we're talking about Christian colonials. We're not talking about Christianity." And it, I mean, that's a whole other thing. I mean, all our prim primary documents that we're reading, such as like Mary Rowlandson, like she uh, quotes scripture all the time. And I said, "I understand that we're not talking about you know what scripture says. We're talking about what these." Christian people did, which is different, obviously, um, and a lot of times they're not in line with one another. Um, but at the same time, this is what they're referring to, and I think it's relevant. But I won't bring it up. That's what I said. Um, but anyway, I'm in class. I got there 15 minutes early. I'm reading, and she comes in about I don't know eight minutes before class started, and she come she came over to me and said, Mark you have to move to the seat that I told you to move to. And I said, well, I respectfully decline. And she said, you, and you know, Mark, like you really have to move to that seat right now. And I said, well, doctor, I respectfully decline. And the whole class is, is listening at this point. All conversations have stopped. I mean, I caused a, a quote unquote scene last time. So they're you know, interested in what is happening at the front of the room. And I said, respectfully decline. And then she said, you know what, Mark, if you don't move right now, I'm going to call campus police and have you escorted out of the classroom. And I said, well, go ahead and call them then. And 
she left the classroom. She didn't call the police. Uh, she grabbed the, the chair. And the department chair came over, and they both walked in the room. They came over to me, and the chair said, Mark, you have to move where you know, doctor is telling you to move. And I was confused at this point because in that meeting that we had last time, I, didn't, I wasn't talking about, about this at this point, but in the meeting that I had with the chair, he said I didn't have to move seats. I didn't have to do assignments if I didn't want to because I'm an adult. I'm paying for the class, yada, yada. Um, so I just told him that I was confused and I'd like to talk to him about it. And he said, okay, grab your stuff. Let's go in the hallway and you know, talk about it. I recorded this conversation, so I asked him if I could record the conversation. And I'm trying to download them at this point um, on my computer. What kind of recorder but, did you uh, use? Um, I just used my phone. It's just some app on my phone. Yeah. Um, I wish There's... I had an actual recorder to be a lot better. But There's what? Oh, I just dropped a link to the, poli to the policies, and she, I mean, she violated the headline thing. So anyway, um, the chair said, well, Mark, um, you know, the professor wants you to move because you're reading your Bible in front of the class. And I said, well, class hasn't even started yet. It's another six minutes before class starts. Like, who, who is she to tell me I can't be reading a book? Um, are you saying that she's really telling me to move because I have my Bible out? And he said, well, you know, um, you know, you kind of like dodge that question. And he said, so, you know, are you going to put your Bible away? And, uh, you know, ignore the fact that it's another six minutes before class started. Um, and he grabbed the professor. She came out and the chair said, you know, Mark's uh, was just reading his Bible before class and such and such. And she said, well, that's not the issue. The issue was the incident from last time. But the thing is, I, he couldn't have known that I was reading the Bible in front of the classroom unless she explicitly told him in the hallway before they walked in to talk to me. There's absolutely no way he could have known. So that's the reason why she wanted me to move, at least one of the reasons why she wanted me to move. Um, and you know, basically, I didn't, I didn't go to class that day. Um, she, I didn't. I refused to move seats. Good. What's her demographic, or is she just a bleeding heart white girl? Well, well she's lesbian, um, and she said she doesn't espouse to either gender. She said that the first day uh, of class. That was the first thing we talked about was her sexual identity and her gender identity. Okay. Um, and for the remainder of that first day of class, we talked about Trump and Clinton and how she can't believe that there's this many racists in the United States that Trump got elected. Um, like things that had nothing to do with the subject of the class. Like, I don't care what you think. Not relevant. Has nothing to do with the truth value of your statements. If you're lesbian, if you're not female or male, if you don't like Trump or you do, I don't care. It has nothing to do with what this class is about. And, you know, th there was uh, uh, several students that day um, that were upset with her because she was talking about her political persuasions the entire class. Um, and there was a letter sent to her anonymously. I don't know how she got it or how, you know, the logistics of that or anything, but another day of class, she came up with this letter that was anonymous, which said that, you know, I, I'm in this class and I'd like to learn about U.S. history to 1865, not about the current election and your you know, politics and everything else. Um, and she continued by saying, um, you know, it's really rude to talk behind people's backs and if you want to talk to me about this, say it to my face. And if it's really that big of an issue, there's another professor teaching it in another semester, and you can just leave. 
I don't know. It's, it's, mm-hmm. she's, okay. I don't well, know. All right. So the thing is, <laughs> Taylor, what do you have to say about all this shit? I mean, I think that you could take their own policies and just shove them right up her ass. She just trampled all over the first, the introduction of the employee manual. Yeah. And not, not to mention your constitutional rights, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess it depends on how big a deal of headache you want to deal with. I'm kind of inclined to write a letter. I, mean, I write really good, mean professional letters. Me too. Yeah. I, I just don't know if it's the right time yet. I mean, I'll get back to you guys on it. Because, I mean, I would like you guys to do that. I think that'd be... I'm not... Yeah, I'm, really... I'm not going to do it. I am going to I'm gonna read the policy and kind of see how many different ways she fucked up. Well, well, but anyway, I met up with... Yeah, what's that? Um... I mean, I'll, I'll write one and send it to you. It's what you should send to them, you know, because you need to position it as, okay, so point one, guys, hi. You've incurred a shit ton of liability here. You've been really, really unwise in your behaviors, and you are liable for massive amounts of liability. So that was your first mistake. Now we could we could we could work on that sentence structure. <laughs> the second mistake is that you continue to compound the problem by doubling down, going so far even as to try to put me in the corner, doing uh, help help the teacher work. I mean the thing is these people are insane. They're completely mm-hmm. fucking insane. The, the point yeah. would be that. I mean, First and foremost, attack her on the in- intellectual dishonesty because she's so dishonest. I think. I think that if you uh, don't just attack because you're angry, Eric. <laughs> if you if you if you do like Suze is seducing me with, and you read everything, you become an ex- if you become an expert on the rules because they're all fucking written down. And then you can just bait her right into them over and over and over again. And then, then at that point, you've got like this recorded pattern of abusive behavior that violates all the policies. And all you're doing is reading your Bible in your seat. Right. I mean, I could be reading and Mein Kampf in front of the class. It shouldn't matter. She has no right to do that. That's like her walking in my my house later on and saying, well, what are you reading right now, Mark? You're not allowed. Uh, You're not allowed in my class. Next oh, week you right. said, yes. next week you should read um, my cop. <laughs> that would be yeah. hilarious, right? You show up and you'd be like, reading my comp, like nothing unusual. Have like a Nazi bookmark. Um, so I, 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 I contacted the dean, at least who I thought was the dean. They contacted me back. Basically, the dean sent one of his subordinates, the student rights and responsibilities coordinator. Uh, she contacted me and set up a meeting. As you know, it's like the next level above the chair or whatever. Um, and during that meeting, they let me know that I was given probation I mean, which basically means if I quote unquote act up in class again, I get kicked out of school. Mark, uh, yeah. The nuclear option is to be gay. The nuclear option. You can claim to be gay at any time, and nobody's going to be allowed to question it. And you can say that they're disc- discriminating against you. Well, I mean, she labeled me as a straight white male. Like, how do you know? That's that goes against more- everything know, but- she believes in. That's ontological violence. Right. How dare she? Right. Deny your homosexuality. What did you have to do? Fuck some dude in the ass to prove it? 
I'm glad and I got to say that. That meeting, that meeting didn't go anywhere. <laughs> um, but then I had another meeting with the dean and the student rights and responsibilities coordinator. And during that hour and a half meeting, I deconstructed every one of their arguments. And they said I was, quote unquote, too intellectual and, quote unquote, would make a very good lawyer. So they said I was being too smart and my arguments were too good. And on several occasions, they said, well, that's a very difficult question to answer, Mark. I don't know if I can do that. And you have these recorded, right? Yeah, I just I just downloaded it. I can send it. I mean, it is a long thing, but okay. and w what they did is they brought up. Um, this is just like one of the things that happened during that conversation. They brought up a class that I took last year where a similar thing happened with my Islam professor, um, and in, in which I was found not guilty, by the way. And the dean that used to be the dean supported me and said that it was the professor's fault and he was acting out of line and I wasn't. And I was like, I was like, go. Oh. They they brought up that incident as an example of past behavior, and there's a behavior chain between then and now. And you know, basically, I, I disrupt classrooms, apparently. And so they're, they're, they're double jeopardizing me uh, during, this, uh, during this meeting. They're finding you not guilty, you can't, you, but they, you're still treating you as though you were guilty. Right. And so I said, you, you're double jeopardizing me. You can't do that. You have no right to do that. And they, uh, and they said, well, oh, really, Mark? Though. That's not double jeopardy, but go ahead. Well, sure. It's the same idea. Um, I mean, they're not trying me. They're just they're just calling me guilty for for that. Right. They're, they're treating um, you're they're treating your not guilty verdict as though it were a guilty verdict. But this is what they said. They said actually, Mark, the uh, there was no investigation held, so you weren't found guilty or not guilty. <laughs> well, just kidding. Uh, well, okay. So that should be thrown out then. Why are we even talking about that if it wasn't investigated? Oh, I was so frustrated. And they said, well, no, Mark, you see, we're, we're just talking about this incident right now, not this last incident. And I said, okay, so we're going to drop this last incident and, and think of it as it never happened. And they said, well, no, Mark, we're not going to be doing that. And I said, well, are we, are we looking at this past incident or are we not? And they said, well, that's, that's a very difficult question, Mark. It's very difficult. So is it too hard for you to answer? Apparently. And Aren't they supposed to be running he, a fucking college? Yeah, and so he brought up in that class, and I said, well, where are you getting this information about the class? Um, and he said, well, uh, I, you know, I have the email that the professor sent to the last dean about your behavior. I don't know what that sound is, but... Um, Whoever's being loud, can you mute, please? Go ahead, Mark. And, I, and I, asked him, I asked him if we could go over that email together, and he said, sure. And so he brought it up in his computer, and, you know, it said what I was talking about earlier, and, you know, the first thing that he wrote was, Mark, the first day of class, when I asked what you know, the student's opinion of Islam was, he said he thought it was militaristic and violent. He didn't like it. Um, and then he said for the remainder of the class, um, when we were going over reading assignments that were assigned for homework, um, he would ask questions about very small portions of the article and take up class time. And so, you know, he's getting, he's like, he's saying, he, he, Mark's asking questions about things he's interested in, and therefore, you know, bad. Um, so I asked him about that. I said, is this an institution? Like, is this, uh, you know, is this a university? What is this place? If I can't ask questions, what is this place? And just because it's a short part of the article doesn't mean it's not important. You know, the First Amendment's really short, but it's also very important when you say, he said, well, yeah, of course, Mark. And I said, well, okay. 
And I said, if this wasn't investigated, what frame are, are you saying that this whole email is, is true? Are you taking it at, at you know, everything that he wrote is, is true and real actually happened. And he said, well, no, Mark, I'm not saying that it wasn't investigated. I said, well, okay. So what if the whole thing is false? What framework are you using to determine what is true and what is false within this email? And he said I was being too intellectual with him. So, yeah. All right. Mark, did you understand what they meant you to do? Wait, what's that, Susanna? Did you understand what they meant you should do? Just ignore what? everything that has been said. Ask them to provide all documentation on con correspondence and cases they have against you. They have to produce it and ignore everything that's not in there. It doesn't exist if they didn't document it. Right. That's good. You should do that right now. You feel like oh, you send somebody an email saying, I demand access to all what she just said. You say, say that again. Yeah, get everything they have documented. And if they haven't documented, it doesn't exist according to their policy. Throw it in yeah. their face. Mm hmm. So just um, ignore petition. Okay. Right. Yeah. Listen, that's going to bring this video to a close. I just want to say, Northern Arizona University, you are going to get some videos made about you and your fucked up <laughs> ways. Okay. So Northern Arizona University, you, your history department is comprised of fascists and fuck them and fuck you.